Es ist gut, dass du mir deine Lunge eingebunden haben. Es ist gut, dass du mir deinen Besitz angeboten haben. Es ist gut, dass du mir deine Tochter angeboten haben. Der Preis für meine Liebe ist einfach, ihr zu bleiben. Bleiben Sie und genießen Sie die Show! What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the show. This is episode number eight of I Hate Tipping Podcast.com. I'm your host, Colin Key. Today I'm gonna talk about some stuff. I'm gonna tell some stories. I'm gonna comment on some other things. And how do you how about that intro? You know how long it took me to make that authentic Hitler sounded in German bullshit intro? <laughs> it took a long ass time. It doesn't sound like much, but and I'm not even sure if it translates right. Like, Anyway, thanks for lending me your ears, your minds, and your souls. Let's do this shit. <coughs> clear my throat. Let me clear my throat. Looks like the mic levels are good. Man, oh man, what a day. I am tired as fuck. I'm going to just let you know that right now. Uh, so, um, and I have a fucking whole lot of shit written down here to talk about today. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. Before I do, as always, the book is called These Ones Are Mine. It's available on iTunes and iTunes. See what I mean? I'm tired. Uh, These Ones Are Mine is the book. It's uh, available on Amazon and Kindle. Hopefully it'll be on iTunes one day. I want to do an audio book. I, I, I seriously want to do an audio book. I love audio books. I'm listening to one right now. I had mentioned it. Uh, a few episodes ago, Girl on a Train. So far, the book is better than, or excuse me, the movie is better than the book, which is weird as hell. I'm not digging the book as much as I thought I would. I thought the book was going to blow me, like, blow me, but it's not really blowing me. It's kind of just like fondling the balls a little bit and teasing and, 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 you know, that bullshit when they like to kiss it and, <laughs> and, and, rubbed her teeth on it and all that shit eh, i don't know so far the movie was better anyway buy the book you'll love it it's true stories crazy stories um and a shitload of, of, of all of the above uh email me it's i hate tipping at aol.com i should say email the show that sounds more professional email the show i hate tipping at aol.com i'm working on my radio voice what do you think of that people let me know comments questions suggestions or just want to send your boy a little bit of love we appreciate that too we love smiles here on k103 all right a little bit of vocal fry for you uh i heard that, that actually can like cause throat cancer or some shit if you do that a lot a lot of those like um little dippy ass socialite chicks do that shit all the time oh my god uh, and, then, and then they chain smoke on top of it and end up trach in their early 30s sorry that was probably going too far all right true story uh i was with my girlfriend of a cup of like maybe two years or maybe no less than that maybe a year and a half and uh i had bought her an iphone for her birthday and one day uh, i i couldn't find my phone and i asked to use hers to find mine to ring it and when i picked it up and walked out of the room with it uh, as soon as i did she got a text message with a dick pic from some random motherfucker <laughs> Fucking big old black ass dick just right in the phone that I fucking bought her for her birthday. Turned out that not only was that meant for her, uh, several other, as I was standing there, a whole bunch of dick pics came in. Turned out that yes, uh, it was they were meant for her. Yes, she was cheating on me with this dude. Yes, it was just some random motherfucker that she had met on Facebook. Yes, he gave her chlamydia because yes, she didn't use any fucking protection Yes, she came home that day, kissed me in my mouth, holding our son, smiled at me, 
Yes, she admitted to all of it. Yes, she gave me chlamydia. Did I say gonorrhea before? She, he gave her chlamydia. She gave. She came home and immediately gave me the chlamydia. Uh, we went to the fucking the the free clinic together. Um, that was embarrassing as fuck. Um, <laughs> and I guess the fucking moral of that story is people suck sometimes. I mean, that really fucking. Uh, but I mean, it got way worse than that. She admitted to cheating on me with like what? She admitted to, I think, four dudes, which means you got to, what, triple that? So it was probably 12 dudes that she, just just some random motherfucker on Facebook that she just fucked with no condom, got burnt and came home and gave it to me. And I will never forget the day when she came home because everything was all fishy. She was acting weird and, and, oh man, what a fucking bummer that is. Don't, don't cheat on people, people. And here's why, not even for any moral grounds or anything like that, but you, you don't be bringing diseases home. Like, what the fuck is that shit? And then, like, just don't be a liar and a piece of shit. Like, it's way better to just be like, you know what? I want to fuck other people. And if that's too much for the other person, then just go your own way. Like, why be a liar and a piece of shit like that? Like, if you want, if what you want is to be fucking all kind of people, then just do that, say that, and then you don't have to fucking hurt people's feelings. Like, I wouldn't have gave a fuck what she was doing. But, like, I'm investing my whole damn being into our relationship, and she's sh- just taking a dump on it. And that shit, I don't know, I'm not, you know, I'm way over it. That was years ago, but <clears throat> it popped into my head, and I just wanted to tell that story. Uh, all right, another true story, after I get some coffee in my gullet. Mm. That's the only way I'm staying awake right now. You should have seen me last night driving that fucking work truck. It's dangerous. Uh, it's just, I'd say it's probably just as bad as driving drunk, driving tired, if not worse. And then it's like, you, you're so tired. You can't even force yourself to pull over, to take the nap. It's like, it can get really brutal out there sometimes. That's why I don't really complain about all the fucking truck driver laws, log books and all that shit and mandatory brakes every so often. It makes sense. Like I, it, it gets dangerous out there. I've had other, dr- other truckers fucking fall asleep and almost wipe me out on a highway at night last night I was I could have been that dude so anyway that's and that's leading into the to the to today which is why I'm so tired right now like I, st- I still didn't get the sleep that I need anyway uh another true story I knew a dude who did not believe in windshield wipers let me say that again I knew a dude who did not believe in windshield wipers and here's what I mean by that uh, this was when I lived in California was in, and I was in the air force and we were all in the dorm rooms and I had just met the guy and it had, the decision had been made like, Hey, we need more beer. And I was like, well, I mean, I'll pay or whatever, but I don't have a ride. And this other dude says, Oh, I'll give you a ride. I'm like, cool. Me and him go out to this car. It's a torrential downpour. I mean, like fucking gale force winds and like tsunami waterfall just sheeting down off the windshield and he just goes and takes off and <laughs> no windshield wipers and i'm looking at him like dude or what what are your wipers broke he was like huh oh no and he flicked them on and it went whoosh, whoosh, and he flicked it right back off and he just pressed his face to the windshield and i was like <laughs> what's the deal dude and he's like what what do you mean i was like why don't you use your windshield wipers he said oh i don't believe in them I was like, what do you mean you don't believe in them? I just don't believe in them. Like, you don't have to believe in them. They're right there. You just showed me. Like, <laughs> how, do you, how do you not believe in it? It's right before your eyes, and you just showed me that they they exist. I was like, oh, I don't believe in using them. I don't know why. I just never did. And he just rode up the street. And we made it there and back safe. But it was just awkward because the whole time, like I said, his fucking eyeball is, is just a millimeter away from the fucking windshield and it was it was retarded and gay and stupid and like what the fuck but hey you know you you live keep on living and you see some weird shit more and more every day that passes i never got in a car with that dude again just uh i'm gonna put that out there but he was fun (laughs) another true story real quick me and my cousin went into the gym one time and we had just got in and we had an indoor track and in the middle, it was a big, huge, it was basically a fucking football field track indoors. Not quite that big, but you know, it was pretty big in the middle of this oval was, uh, all the, the fucking 
cardio equipment, the treadmills and the bikes and the spinning bikes and fucking stair steppers and all that horse shit. And me and my cousin jumped on the track and we're getting our warm up. We're just starting to do some laps around the whole, you know, the outside of the track. And we came around a bend and rode up and we saw two gorgeous young broads, excuse me, women, chicks, dames, birds, whatever, uh, ladies, girls, females all running on treadmills next to each other at the same time as well i know i i don't know about him but i had looked over and noticed them was like oh damn like easily the two be- most beautiful chicks that i had ever seen in this gym one of them looked over at me or looked over in our direction and we kind of smiled and i we, me and my cousin rode past them or ran past them and then i just heard ah! <laughs> <laughs> and that, that broad had lost her footing while she was looking at us, fell down, smacked off the fucking belt, and it shot her off the machine, <laughs> crumbled on the fucking floor and like slid halfway across the track. She just just fell down in a ball of fucking uh, embarrassment. And it was funny as fuck. And uh, we didn't even stop to help her up. <laughs> we just kept on running. I think we finished our lap and went and hit the free weights it was that was that was pretty funny i also speaking of the gym was in the gym one time and i saw a dude benching i don't know how much a decent amount in the whole the entire fucking bench just collapsed underneath him he he was holding the fucking shit up in the air he was bench pressing flat bench and the whole thing just went to the ground underneath him and he was just just fell to the ground with it still holding the fucking bar in the air and I don't know, it might have been 200 and something pounds or whatever. Uh, lucky him that he was strong enough to hold it up because otherwise if that shit had just like snapped his elbows off and the bar just caved into his face or his throat or something, that would have been a fucking scene. Everybody went and helped him. Holy shit, the whole fucking gym heard that shit and ran over and pulled that weight off of him. That was And that incident got me paying close attention to the machines whenever I'm in the gyms looking for loose bolts and shit because I actually had a, a, a leg leg press machine collapse on me when I was on it in a whole different gym years later. Speaking of gyms, I went into that so I could uh, start off on my first real big topic here, which is gyms. The reason that I decided to talk about the gym today and working out is because I just got back in there yesterday after a long time of being letting myself go and getting sloppy again and, and just completely out of shape. I'm still strong, but you know, I don't look the abs ain't there. <laughs> the, the definition ain't there. Uh, it was, it was time. I, I let it go way too long. And I, I, I did it. I got up I fucking went yesterday. I, I had a great workout. I'm paying for it today. Obviously I'm old and uh, I'm pretty damn sore. My neck's sore. My back's sore. My arms are sore. My abs are sore. My chest is sore. My legs are sore. Everything's sore. But that's a good thing. If you work out, you know that that's a good thing. It's something that I actually grew to love over the years. But anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. The gym has been a big part of my life for a long time. I just want to talk about it a little bit. I actually started working out when I was uh, 14 years old. What motivated me to start working out was my best friend in the neighborhood, in the hood, on the block. His dad wanted him to be a wrestler and just basically forced him to be it and then not only did he put he forced him onto the the wrestling team and he also got him a gym membership because his friend owned a gym my buddy just disappeared from the block all the rest of us were out there smoking weed and getting hired and and drinking 40s and shit my boy was off on the wrestling team and lifting weights and then one day like came back and this dude was fucking jacked and we were all like what the fuck and i was like oh yeah no i want that too I didn't have money for a gym membership, and they don't let you do that when you're that young anyway. Uh, it was because I was only 14 without like a, I don't know, maybe they do these days. I don't know. But back then, you had to have somebody get you in. And so I just went and asked my uncle because he was big. He was a big-ass dude always. And I just said, Uncle Tom, do you have a uh, like some weights I can have? And he was like, yeah. And he gave me his old bench with the old cement-filled fucking weight plates. And I took them up in my bedroom, and I was on that shit every day. And that was what? So that was almost 30 years ago, 20 something years ago. And for the most part, ever since then, I've been not 100 percent steady in the gym. But for the most part, more often than not, if you see me, 
I was working out in some sort of way or fashion in my life in that time of my life. From that point, after the when, once I turned 16, me and that same buddy who was on a wrestling team joined our own gym two hoods over that we used to fucking walk or ride our bikes to, which was like fucking, I don't know, four or five miles away. And we used to go every single day. We used to walk, ride a bus, or mostly walk because we were pretty poor. And I remember the, those early days. I remember going in and not being able to bench fucking like barely over 100 pounds. I remember not being able to do one fucking pull up, barely able to do 10 chin ups, barely able to fucking pick up the 45 pound uh, plates to put them on the, the bars. I remember uh, the early days of supple- buying supplements. I remember buying shit like uh, the, the the protein powder mixes and shit that just wouldn't even dissolve. <laughs> like nowadays you put it in, you shake it up. The shit's excellent. Any flavor you want. And basically is is super premium, uh, as good as you, as good as you can get, and um, you could probably this shit's so pure you could like probably inject it straight into your fucking veins these days. Back then, you take four or five scoops of that bullshit, it looked like flour, and you put it in a cup, and it would just glop in there and just float <laughs> or or sink, whatever. And I used to take these giant fucking horse pills. I don't know what was it, creatine or what, all kind of horse shit. Tried all the supplements over the years. The shit that worked, the shit didn't work. The creatine, the fucking nitric oxide, the fucking testosterone, the uh, the 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 niacin, niacin. I've, I've taken everything ex- short of steroids. I've uh, I've set goals. I've reached goals. I've I've set goals that I didn't reach. Uh, I remember one particular goal uh, way back in the day when I had first joined the YMCA. I was in the in the free weight room, and this young Russian dude was standing next to me. This dude had to be about six four, six five, probably two hundred and fucking uh, two fifty. I'll say all muscle, like just uh, just a fuck. He was like Ivan Drago in fucking. Uh, Rocky four and he was standing there, but he was young. He was way younger than me. Like I was, I don't know how old I was. I might've been 20 something. And he was probably 20. If I was 25 or 26 or something, he was 20 and he was curling 80 pound dumbbells, one in each hand, just standing free fucking curl, just standing straight up with the, the 80 pound dumbbells down at his side and just curling up. And I was looking at him like, 80s? Really? Dude, really? And I just, I think I even asked him, like, hey, how, what, how long did it take you to get to that weight? And he was just like, oh, I don't know. I just do it, dude. I set a goal right then. I said, I want to be able to curl 80s. And I think maybe six months later, maybe eight months later, I was curling 80s. So I've, I've really dedicated myself to this shit at times. Um, I've, I've gotten, I haven't like set world records or anything with, with weight in the gym, but I have done shit that was impressive enough for big guys to come over and and compliment me and and ask questions, especially in in curls. Biceps have always been a easy thing for me to develop. And I got really, really strong at biceps, even though I've seen some dudes like on fucking YouTube curling like 225 and shit. I never got to that point, but I could, I mean, I was curling over 150 for reps and shit. And I'm, you know, benching, I think my best bench was uh 325 or some shit like that. But that day I guarantee I could have did 350. I just, the guy who was spotting me, I was taking up all his time and he couldn't, he didn't have time to do his workout. So I let him go, but I, I just kept going up and up and up. And I think I could have definitely hit 350. 350 for me is great. I know there's guys out there. I knew a dude who was the, uh, the record holder in my state, I believe for bench press. I don't know how much, 700, 800 pounds or some shit he was doing. I never needed to do that. Point is I went in and I went in and, and I took it serious. And I, and, uh, for many, 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 many years, I've had, uh, subscriptions to fucking muscle magazines, I've watched a zillion videos on the shit. I've learned so much and then forgot so much and then learned more on top of that. I've asked questions of everybody in the gym. Um, I've done the dieting. I've done the the, the cardio. Uh, I've I've gotten my fucking body fat way down. I've had abs. I've had uh, I've been I've done what I wanted to do a lot. And then I've also had, you know, bad shit where I took the wrong supplements and ended up in the hospital and I fucking like ripped some shit in my shoulder that I'm still dealing with right now. And then I fucking 
fucked up my lower back a little bit trying to do the wrong things. And I've had the full fucking range of experiences in the gym. And actually, well, no, you know, I was going to plug the book again because there's a couple doozies of stories about the, the gym in the book. Just buy it and read them. I guarantee you won't be bored. So some of the things I wanted to say about the gym here. Um, one of the main things about the gym is most of the time, in over 20 years of going to the gym, most of the time it, I was in there alone. A couple of times I had workout partners, but for very short periods of time. Most of the 20 plus years that I've spent in the gym have been alone. So the point with that is it's, it's, it's a solo sport for the most part. It's a, there's camaraderie and shit in there, but you got to be in your own head. If you have a workout partner, that's excellent, but you can't be dependent on that. You have to, and the, the whole point of saying that is the main reason that it's good to go to the gym is because you develop the mental fortitude to go to the gym because in order to get any type of results that you're looking for in the gym, it takes consistency. Consistency is one of the hardest things that there is to achieve as a human being. And if you can get yourself in the habit of being consistent in the gym, then that will spill over to the whole rest of your life. I could prove that in a million different ways with a million different things that I've done just because I've, I'm already used to going forward when I don't feel like it. And that's what going to the gym breeds you to do you do you go you keep going when you don't want to and then you see the results and then it's rewarding and then it just becomes habit and then that you can use that same uh mental shit in the whole rest of your life even though going to the gym one thing that i've noticed over the years is that it is work like it's called working out for a reason because that's what you're doing you're in there working you're it, it can be fun and, and rewarding and all that shit, but you got to realize you're going in there and you're burning energy. You're burning energy and you're literally hurting yourself on purpose because it makes you stronger because your body responds to that by repairing the damage and then building you up so that you can endure more next time. So it hurts and it's hard to make yourself do it, but it's worth it because well, I wrote down a whole bunch of a uh, whole a list of here of a few things, a few things at least. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm always clearing my throat on here. I don't know. Something about sitting in front of the mic makes my throat like uh, makes me feel like I just swallowed a load. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so what did I write down here? As far as uh, the benefits. I wrote uh, the the list of benefits is too numerous to list, but here's a few. Uh, you sleep better. You have way better sex. Uh, <clears throat> you're better looking and therefore more attractive to people, uh, to other people. You become stronger, literally. You become faster, literally. You just generally feel better about yourself. Your mood is usually better. You develop mental focus that, like I said, bleeds out into the entire rest of your life. You can apply that same focus. So in other words, you have to, if you're going to be anything in life, you have to, at some point in your life, develop that, 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 that drive, that will to succeed. And what you just, where you build those skills up, what task you put yourself into to, to train yourself to do that depending on how hard it is, it's going to get, that's the level of, of fortitude that you're going to get. Going to the gym is a major, um, it can be majorly difficult. It can be easy, but you know, the more work you put in, the, the better, the, the gains and the benefits. So what I'm saying is if you go in it hard at the gym and you succeed, then there's all the rest of the shit in life is nothing. Um, you feel more confident when you're working out all the time. Um, your stamina is increased and the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. So if you're thinking about working out, if you're wondering if you should, the answer is always yes. Just make it a part of your life for your entire life. Just, just, it's just like me. I, I expect to always have an, a, a car payment no matter what, because I know that I'd, I've had so many pieces of shit cars in my life. I don't ever want another one. I want to always drive something newer at least. And so I know the car payment is going to be in my life for my entire life. So uh, that is another thing along with exercise. It's going to be a part of my life for my entire life because I love the benefits that I get from working out and I love new car smell. 
So there you have it. That's all I want to say about uh, working out. Next subject. A quick show note from one of the episodes previously that I forgot to mention was uh, just speaking back to the gym shit. That bottle that I talked about, that Embrava bottle, I used that for the gym yesterday too. And that was actually the first time I used it at the gym and it worked great. I used it for my protein shit. I put it in there. It doesn't have like the, the little ball for to make it like an official shaker bottle, but the protein that I use, I don't need one. I don't need that anyway. But the shit flows into your mouth nice enough to where you can drink shit at a nice rate. And it also has uh, measurement lines on the side of it with like all the ounces and shit, which which I really need to to make the uh, the right mixture and shit and all that. And I actually use that for my coffee, so I know what eight ounces or sixteen ounces is. To, to I use that bottle because it has lines on it. I fill it with the water and then I pour that into my coffee maker, so I know I have the right amount of water. Damn, my voice is fucking a douche today. All right, the next top, the next bleh, subject for today is uh, movies. Uh, just a quick mention of a movie that I saw a while ago, actually, earlier this year. It was uh, the movie Split, which I'm sure you've already heard about. But I just wanted to mention it because I really enjoyed it. Um, I saw it in theaters. It was really good. John McAvoy, I believe, is the main character's name. The the guy who has all the multiple personalities. That's what it's about. A dude with multiple personalities. It's actually about a lot more than that. And actually, I believe that the story is pretty fucking brilliant um i really really like this 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 shade from uh inside of m night Shyamalan's uh m night Shyamalan. inside his brain very interesting story very i don't think i think a lot of people that i heard talk about it didn't quite understand it what he was going for but uh they enjoyed the movie anyway just because it's it's a thriller um very very cool movie the main chick in it is the, is the main, I don't know her name, Big Eyes, White Girl. She was the main character in Morgan, which was a fucking diarrhea sandwich if I've ever seen one. But uh, she was great. Everybody was great. I especially dug the old psychiatrist lady who was in it. And I heard people talking shit on her character saying that they didn't enjoy her. I thought she was fucking great. Her, her shit was, it's great acted. It's it's well written. It's very well written. And if you're an M. Night Shyamalan, M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, fan, this ties into one of his other movies. I'm not going to say which one, but you'll be pleasantly surprised. If you haven't heard about that already and you're an M. Night Shyamalan fan, you, you're you lucky because it, it's, a, it's a huge, huge spoiler. So I would say if you have been thinking about watching this and you dig his movies at all, you absolutely want to watch this. If you're looking for a, if you just want to be a fucking blockbuster night or a red box night or whatever, an on demand night, this is great for, you know, you and your boo boo to sit on the couch and fucking cuddle up and watch and, 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 and fucking, you know, uh, what did I write down? I wrote, it's good acting. It's a good story. It's good directing. It's very tense. It ties into another Shyamalan movie. One big thing for me that I wanted to mention is that I was never a hater of Shyamalan's movie like movies like everybody else was i've heard so much hate about this dude this dude's movies like he's a different director and i think that's a good thing he does his own style of movies and every one of the stories that he's written is unique and uh, well crafted and it, i think the problem with people is that it's not they're not getting what they're expecting which is the same old same old and to that i say go fuck yourself um all of his movies weren't like fucking a plus knockout home runs but i mean for example um i liked signs a lot i would watch signs if i saw it on tv right now and, and was looking for something to watch signs is good i mean i'm a mel gibson fan so there you go but that's a whole another fucking thing i'm gonna talk about him <laughs> one of the on one of these shows and i actually want I, I got something coming directly related to mel gibson that i'm gonna incorporate into the show as soon as i figure out how to do it technically signs is a good movie to me of course the sixth sense everybody loves that one i think that's what it was the sixth sense came out first and everybody judged all the rest of them to that one comp compared them and i guess people felt like he kind of shot his load with that one but i don't think so um the village is a good story it, it was kind of a weird <laughs> kind of a it was kind of a bummer of a it was kind of a letdown of a reveal 
But I mean, I I get it. I think that would have been better in book form, honestly, because it could have put a whole bunch more detail into it and shit so that it was it didn't just kind of go off a cliff at the end. But still, and it was enjoyable. It just only it's enjoyable one time. Lady in the Water was a piece of shit. Um, I'm not even going to I'm sorry. I'm not going to back that one up. Uh, what are the ones that I like? The Happening ain't bad. I heard a lot of people take a shit on that. And I would watch that again if I saw it on TV. Um, the Visit's a good story. It's a good movie, I mean. It was a solid story. Definitely took a turn that I didn't expect. I thought it was well written. So anyway, Shamalan's all right with me. And uh, I would highly recommend going to see Split if you haven't yet. And like I said, it's about a dude with multiple personalities. But it goes way deeper than that. Next segment. Next segment. <laughs> Today's hygiene tip is pretty simple. It was it's self-explanatory to me. And the reason that I picked this one was because of something I heard last night. I was listening to your mom's house podcast and I heard Christina Pazitsky explain how she was just using a public toilet the other day and she went in, pulled down her pants and sat down blindly and fucking sat right in somebody else's piss. <laughs> That ain't something that I can say that I've ever done before. That would fucking flip me the fuck out. It wouldn't happen to me because here's something that I haven't explained yet. Uh, when I was in the Air Force, I used to, one of my jobs was to drain airplane toilets. And I used to drive a sh- what they call a shit truck. And it had hoses and stuff. And, and those are some of the fucking best stories in my book were, were the shit the shit truck stories. Um, there are a couple that are, that that are the ones that I'm the most proud of in that book. <laughs> One and two in particular. And they were, anyway, when you work on a shit truck, we had shit truck training and some of the training involved medical shit. And there's something that happens called getting dumped on. When you get dumped on, when you're working a shit truck, it's self-explanatory. It means you get covered and soaked in other people's, whatever was in the toilet's inside the airplane tanks just douses you. It happens all the time because people don't do what they're supposed to or, you know, equipment failure or whatever, but it, it happens. It's very common. That's why we're all, we were, we wore all kind of safety equipment, basically a uh, chem suit and all kind of shit, rubber gloves and boot, all kind of shit. Because when it happens, that's dangerous. There are diseases that you can catch through other people's poop. Piss ain't so bad. Piss is, is for the most part sterile, but they taught us in the Air Force that you can catch shit like, uh, for example, hepatitis A and some shit called cryptosporidiosis from other people's shit. And uh, you can catch flu virus and, and, and a whole bunch of other bacterial shit that comes directly from other people's shit. So what I'm saying is... Uh, a lot of people don't know how to shit or, you know, just shit on the toilet seats. I, I, there's no way in hell I'm going. I would shit on myself before I sat down on the public t- toilet seat without. Uh... Anyway, what I'm getting at is you need to wipe the toilet seat off and or lay some fucking toilet paper down on that shit. I do both. I take my hand sanitizer in with me. I squirt a little bit and just give it a little <laughs> One, once or twice over with some toilet paper and then I lay some just a, one strip on one side and one on the other just so my butt don't touch that fucking seat good to go I do it every time uh, and then I take a little bit of wadded up toilet paper and I put it between my dick and the, the lip you know how your dick kind of presses up against the fucking lip of the fucking toilet there or well, it can depending on how you sit uh, I put a little wad of toilet paper there just so I ain't touching no part of where nobody else didn't took a shit or pissed uh, that shit's crazy as hell. I ain't never sat down in nobody else's piss. I, I don't want, I remember I went to a public toilet at the hospital. I took my mom to the hospital and they had one little fucking bathroom near the, the, the room that we were in a little, little one. And I went in there and fucking blew that fucking toilet to hell. I went in there and unleashed fucking fury on that toilet. And while I was in there fucking giving her hell, Somebody knocked on the door and I said occupied. And then a minute later, like five minutes later, I was in there a long time. Like five minutes later, when I got done, I went outside, washed my hands, went out 
and the dude was standing there and he was like tapping his foot and like like shaking and shit because he had to go real bad and he went straight in right after me and it i mean it had to smell like fucking a, a f- dead f- <laughs> raccoon and like five fucking zombie fetuses i don't know it had to smell fucking crazy as hell in there and he went straight in that is something that i would not do i would have um if i went to that bathroom and had to take a shit or piss or whatever i don't i'm not going in directly after somebody else fucking blew it up if i went in and i smelt got a whiff of something i had to turn right around and ran around that hospital looking for another fucking bathroom so i don't know we're all different i ain't doing that shit um but yeah, just put some toilet paper down, wipe the seat off, put some toilet paper down. You really don't want to catch somebody else's flu virus because you directly touch their shit. Like, does that even sound sexy? There's, there's probably some shit on the seat. There's prob- on the, ha- the handle, all that. Wash your hands, people. Put some fucking toilet paper on the toilet seat. Uh, next segment. Have you ever had a blade lodged in your motherfucking pituitary gland? Let me tell you, it is impossible to remove said blade from said gland. Hence, the motherfucking snapped off blade in the back of my head, motherfucker. Here's a question. What is the deal with the... I'm trying not to sound like a fucking asshole when I say this. What is the what is the correlation between being poor and being a fucking bad person? Here's what I mean by that. What is up with there being so many people in the hood that just don't give a fuck about shit? Let me let me see if I could say that a little bit better. It would seem to me that a bunch of people whose circumstance was low would 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 work together to try to improve their circumstance. Uh, You I would think that people poor people would stick together and and try to have an attitude of of we want better for ourselves and we're going to work together to try to help ourselves where is that in the hood i don't i don't get it i asked this question because what what is the fucking deal with fast food places in the hood or in just in in low or just customer service in any type of fucking joint that you go in where people have to help and serve you and shit there's a whole fucking attitude of don't give a fuck about fucking shit fuck in in food places, especially in the hood. Now, this is you're speaking to a person who grew up in the hood, has always basically lived in the hood. And this, except for when I was away, the few years that I was in the military and like a little bit when I a little bit of time I spent living in North Carolina and stuff, I was doing OK. But for the most part, and now I live in the hood. Most most of my life I've lived in the hood and I can tell you that I've had many ex- horrible experiences with especially like fucking Kmart, but in particular food places in the hood where I don't even go there anymore and I don't understand it. I look around where I live and for one thing, you see a whole bunch of like little convenience stores and shit, predominantly black neighborhood I live in, predominantly black neighborhood that I grew up in, predominantly black, but also, you know, some poor white people, not poor, but you know, lower middle class to, to fucking lower class, whatever. And you look around and and the, the businesses that you see around these places are all owned by foreigners. And this is not to say anything negative about the foreigners. The, the, what this is, the question is, these foreigners have come from wherever. I, and I mean, I see Africans, I see people from like Palestine, I see uh, Indian people, all sorts of people who have come from all other different places in the world. And they come to where we live and they open their businesses and they do just fine. And I'm like, what is the problem with all these broke ass people who live here doing that? Like there is no initiative to do fucking shit or give a damn about anything in the hood. And I don't understand the mentality at all. I went to Wendy's one time and I have so many fucking Wendy's in the hood stories. Here's like a couple real quick off the top of my head. One time I went with my buddy. We went through the drive through ordered our food. Got the bag and the, the drinks from the, the chick at the window. Started to drive away. 
before my buddy, my buddy had the bag. I was driving. My buddy had the bag of food in his lap and he just got a feeling and he said, no, stop the car. And I was like, what? He was like, stop the fucking car. I stopped the car. He opened the bag. He pulled out his fucking burger. And I'm telling you, he hadn't looked at it. He just had a feeling and he opened it up and it looked fine. But then he flipped the fucking top half of the burger open and there was only a half of a fucking burger patty on his burger. <laughs> it was just a sloppy piece of shit sandwich anyway, but they only gave him. So if it was a circle beef patty, just just cut it in half and take the other half away. And that's all they gave him was a half of a fucking beef. And he just felt it. And he just knew something was wrong. And he inspected the food. And, and, and of course, he ran back in there fucking flipping out. I went to a, a Wendy's. That same Wendy's in the hood one time, and I asked uh, the person who took my order, I said, okay, they had like a sriracha fish sandwich. And I said, can I have a little bit extra sriracha sauce? And she said, okay, yeah, cool. Went around, got my food. My mom had ordered food, too. Uh, we drove back to her house. As I was driving, I opened up my shit. I opened up my sandwich, and they had just basically dumped half a bottle of fucking sriracha sauce on the sandwich to the point where it was just completely soaked in sriracha sauce. Like, they were just like, fuck you. It just squeezed all. It was a fucking moat of fucking sriracha sauce in the pla- in that paper wrapping that they wrapped the sandwiches with. Um, but I, I was so hungry, I said, fuck it, and I, I started eating it. And immediately, my stomach started hurting. I dug my hand in the bag for my french fries, and they gave me all of the little fucking, like, if you scrape the bottom of the fucking fry fry later whatever the fuck they call it and got all the little pieces that like went through the flat fry basket they gave me like all those little fucking greasy soaked pieces in the thing and i was sitting there and i got so mad like i i parked the car and the truck in front of my mom's house and i sat there like i was like fucking turning into the hulk i was so fucking mad and i, I couldn't stop myself i went back up there pulled up to the window and I didn't do anything bad, but I just fucking went, I just, I was just asking the the little woman who worked there, I was just like, why would you do that? Like who, what, what the fuck is this? And she, and she could see it. I could tell that she could see that I was losing my fucking mind because she looked terrified and she was like, sir, just calm down. Let me fix this. I can give you whatever you want. I can fix this, sir, sir, please just call. And I, and I said, I can't, she said, I can, what was your order? I will, I will replace your order. And I said, I can't even fucking eat now. My stomach hurts too bad from this, the fish sandwich, the fish that they gave me was like hard. Like it had been sitting there all day. I was so fucking flipped out. Uh, there was another time, a, not that same Wendy's, but a different Wendy's in a different hood. I went to order this, the shit and the same fucking thing. Young dude gave me a fucking the fry cup, paper cup thing full of the little tiny grease soaked bottom pieces of the fucking French fries. And I went back. To, I was going to punch that motherfucker in his face. I was so mad. And I said, listen, bruh, this ain't going to cut it. And he looked at me, the young black dude, fucking, I don't know, teenager, probably 19 or something. He was like, huh? I was like, yeah, this shit ain't going to cut it, man. And I handed it to him. He was like, oh, yeah, all right, my bad. I'll get you another. Like, just it could give a fuck. I don't understand. I don't understand that. Like, I grew up in the hood. I had many jobs in the hood. I've worked food jobs in the hood. I gave a fuck. About, I had a little bit of a fucking pride in, in the things that I did. Like, even if I, you know, I hated my job, I wasn't going to do a bad job because I knew I wanted to get another job eventually. I didn't want to have a bad record. And I just, I don't. I just don't understand that fucking mentality. And I'm not. I'm getting mad just thinking about this shit. This shit. <clears throat> I went to a steak and shake. Uh, place. I don't know if you guys have that wherever you live. Uh, I used to love Steak and Shake. Delicious food. I went there one time. Young black dude, hood dude, took my order, handed me my shit, looked at me like, fuck you when he handed me my shit. Me and my girlfriend immediately got food poisoning. Like, she started eating her shit, and she was like, no, nah, something's wrong here. And I, and I just was like, whatever, mine tastes fine, and I ate it. But then at the end of it, I, like, opened it up, and the, I realized that the beef patty on my, like, beef steak burger whatever the fuck it was it looked like somebody had cooked this patty and it had fallen into like the grease trap like the edge of it was completely black completely grease soaked 
crunchy as fuck hard and just looked old like with uh, like bits and pieces of other fucking food like stuck to it like they just gave me some old piece of shit and we got violently ill with food poisoning and was down for like two three days couldn't like on the floor like throwing up and shitting at the same time like i remember we both drank pepto-bismol and we threw up all over every the walls and everything so it was just pink fucking stinking puke all over our apartment for two whole fucking days if i had a bazooka i would have used it to fucking wipe that fucking steak and shake off of the planet i promise you um it's just a dude who didn't give a fuck just just like fuck people i don't know i don't understand that i remember in reno nevada which is the hood I went, uh, me and my buddy were, we were on our way to Lake Tahoe to go snowboarding and we stopped to Reno for gambling and shit. And we went into Burger King. And I remember this, <laughs> there was a, we were up at the counter. We had just ordered our food and then behind us a line, like a few other people had come in and the chick behind the counter and the dude started like slap box fighting and then giggling and like running around and chasing each other and shit. And then the, the the female comes up to the counter and she says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but we, we ain't taking no more orders right now. Sorry, make, come back in a little while. Just, to, I don't know. Like, I, I'm from the hood and I, I was an asshole. Me and my boys were all assholes, but I, we, I don't, I never did no shit like that. I, I give a shit about what other people think about the work that I do. And most motherfuckers in the hood do not give a shit about anything, it seems like. And I don't understand it. So, so, so I asked the question, like, is there something about being poor that just takes away your give a damn about anything? Because to me, it seems like, and in me, it always made me want more. When I was a child, 10 years old, I got my first job because my white buddy's mom took me and him to the store and she bought him a whole fuckload of candy and didn't buy me shit. And not that I didn't ask her for anything, but I was kind of hoping she would buy me because she said, oh, come on, you can come with. Took us both to the store, bought him everything he wanted in there, didn't buy me anything, and he didn't share with me. And I went home that day, no resent against them, whatever, but I said to myself at 10 years old that I, I want to be able to get my own candy. And I had, I got a job, the, I think the next day up at the grocery store. And I just went up and asked the manager and he, he looked at me like I was crazy and just laughed and said, oh yeah, okay, kid, whatever. And and let me fucking start working anyway i don't understand why everybody doesn't have that like the, it's the opposite the majority of the people are just like fuck it fuck them fuck you and and you know what fuck the world and i don't understand that and i hate it and whatever um and i had a white girlfriend <laughs> and this is not a racial thing uh but and she was from a way better neighborhood this was i don't know this is 15 years ago or something. And um, I remember she, I'll never forget. She took me to her part of town, which is a way, way, way better part of town. And not only that, but on the flip side, it's also a town that's super prejudiced against black people. But, and I, there was all kind of fucking stories about young black dudes getting beat by the police and shit, drugs and shit planted on them and uh, whatever bad stuff. But anyway, she took me over there and they had a 24 hour Burger King where she lived and not only was it 24 hours they cooked every meal fresh hot from scratch every time so you went there they didn't have the burger patties sitting waiting underneath the fucking heat lamp or whatever or microwave they fucking cooked everything fresh every time and they tell you that and they say it's going to be a few minutes uh if you could just pull over there we'll bring it out to you every single time and I started going there and there's a fucking it's miles away. So it was like costing me extra gas money to get to this fucking place. But I started going there all the time because the service was great. The food was great every time. And and there's no reason to not expect. Why the fuck don't people in the hood work together to better the fucking situations? What is with that mentality is and it's the majority of the fucking attitude that you come across when you're in the fucking hood. People who don't give a fuck about shit. Is it in the water? It can't be because it. I don't have it. I don't. I just don't get that. Anything else I want to say about this? Um, nope. That's it. <coughs> I'm gonna go ahead and uh, talk about a song now. <coughs> Ooh. <laughs> What am 
not a doing, all I really see is garbage. They all narcissistic and harmless, delusionally car sick. What I'm talking about is all these rappers on the market. Claiming they got skill, I beg your motherfucking pardon. Make me want to bargain, some apartment and start arson. Awesome, put a rapper body in a garden. My Martian, we on the same planet. I don't see anybody fucking with me, goddammit. Prof, I've been hot since Michael J. Fox could talk. I'm a genius and use my cock a lot. The last one who's underrated, who yet hasn't made it anyway, Mazel Tov. <laughs> Better than a midday fuck. Then my rapper, man, I think they suck. I'm a buying old big grape truck. What? Drive around the country with my fist taped up. Yep. Y'all a puddle of piss. Love it or not, at least I give 100%. Is it cause I ain't covered in tattoos? Well, sit back, cupcake, I got bad news. You can't look me in the face. Yeah, I really dig that song a lot. It's called uh, Ghost by a dude named Prof, P-R-O-F. Uh, he's a dude from Minnesota, a rapper. Um, an old Air Force buddy of mine was on him years ago and mentioned him to me, and then I forgot, and then I reconnected with my Air Force buddy, and I remembered because uh, that Air Force buddy of mine is actually an Emmy award-winning fucking video editor, and he did a video piece with that uh, dude, Prof, I was like, holy shit, <laughs> big things these days, huh? He's like, uh, you know, I was like, I remember you used to, you tried to put me on to that dude, and now you're working with him. That is the shit, man. Fucking good on you. He's like, yeah, you know, sometimes things are good. But, uh, yeah, I'm proud of him, proud as hell of him, uh, living his dream out there. And uh, thanks again, dude, for putting me on to this dude. He's got some pretty good raps and shit. Uh, I am going to be looking into some more of his catalog because, like I said, I have just recently got back into him. That song right there also features Tech Nine. If you know anything about him, he's pretty he's pretty dope. Uh, so yeah, it's called Ghost by Prof. Next segment. I remember years ago before I went to the military, I was training. I didn't know what I was getting into with basic training, and I was a weed head an alcoholic and I figured I needed to start getting in shape um because this was one of the points in my life where I was really slacking just because I was in I was getting high and fucking doing coke and whatever else all the time and I decided I needed to start getting in shape and I started getting up like before dawn and go running and doing all kind of fucking calisthenics and shit on my patio and I would run up and down the neighborhood and do jumping jacks and jump rope and do whatever and every morning, I'd after I was done with my exercise, I'd come in and I'd eat and I'd sit down and I'd watch this show called Fitness Beach. <clears throat> and it was just motivation. It was it was mainly a I think a girls workout show, but there were a few dudes on there too. But it was you know it wasn't like a lot of weightlifting. It was just like kind of jazzercisey or whatever. But it was I mean it was a good show. Years ago, this is in the fucking nineties, and I watched that show every single day. And I remember that they always had like. Not bikini babes, but like those workout outfits. Like the, that's another thing I wanted to mention about the gym. Why do girls have to wear sexy gym clothes? Like, don't get me wrong, I appreciate a, a female looking good, but that's too much of a fucking distraction. Like, I don't. It's hard as hell just to focus when you got a chick walking around with her fucking camel toe showing because her fucking shit. I don't know. It's, it's, it's in like cleavage in the gym and makeup. Like I, there's so many girls in the gym with like makeup and fucking perfume on and shit and, 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 and ultra tight fitting fucking Nikes, whatever sexy new shit and their nipples out. Like, come on, don't bring that shit in the gym. You're going to make somebody drop a fucking dumbbell on somebody else's foot. Save that shit for the club or something. You don't got to be sexy when you're working out. Like, you, you seriously don't. Like, you don't need to do that to pull a dude, even, if that's your goal. Like, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to get me a dude. Just don't. You're going to just fuck up, like, 10 other dudes' workouts just because they're going to be fucking looking at you. I don't know. Maybe I sound old. I love it and I hate it at the same time. But anyway, so I used to watch Fitness Beach every day. <clears throat> and I remember these, these, these babes would come out and they'd do their fucking jazzercise or whatever the fuck they were doing in these sexy ass outfits and there was always this one woman who just out worked she outworked out the other women 
and she just looked fucking 58 times better than all the other women and her body was fucking voluptuously way more banging than all the other women and she was just like her skin looked better and her hair was longer and she was just fucking her lips were bigger and she was just better and she was like funner and she would give like better comp or uh, commentary and shit than all she just made the other chicks look like fucking kind of sad dudes and uh then i forgot all about that but I, for like, like a year or something i watched that damn show and i forgot about it but that, that one chick she just fucking shined and then years later after i had fucking went to the military and then come back my buddy hands me an fhm magazine one time and he's like here i'm done with this I was like, all right and so i took it i was driving school buses at the time and i was sitting there in my school bus and i was look staring at the, the woman on the cover like she looks familiar she looks good as fuck. Who the fuck is this broad? And I'm flipping through and I'll read the article. And then there's an interview with her. And I just remember her, they were asking her like, yeah, so what, what kind of things do you like to do? And she says, oh, I like to ride dirt bikes and like snowboarding and I like being goofy. And she, I was like, what the fuck? What? what? This was that same chick. And it dawned on me that, that was, this was the same woman who was on fitness beach. I hadn't put it together and talked for a little bit. And then I was like, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I know that face. I know those dimples. She has big, huge, just deep, gorgeous fucking dimples. I'm talking about Leanne Tweeden. <laughs> All right. First off about her, Miss Leanne Tweeden. She is easily one of the most beautiful women that I've ever seen in my life. And I mean, she's voluptuous. She said that. She said, yeah, I, don't know. I guess I'm just voluptuous like my mom. <laughs> I guess her mom is banging too. This woman has like, yeah, she has a banging ass body. Uh, she's sexy. She's all natural. She, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure. I know she did Playboy and everything looked like, you know, like it wasn't store bought. I, I don't know. I guess there's some good fakers out there. But like I said, she said that her mom was built like that too. So I'm guessing that it's all real. Um, <clears throat> she's another one that's all mixed up. She They they were talking about what nationality she is. And she, it was just a mix of, I don't know, German, Irish, Portuguese, French, Spanish, fucking German, Polish. I don't know, it was like a whole bunch of shit. And proof again that when we mix it all up, it just... It just makes the fucking best, the best shit. Just throw a little bit of this and a little bit of that in there. Fuck all this pure, this value in pure races. Holy shit. Leanne Tweeden is beyond gorgeous. Look her up. Um, once I discovered her in that magazine and I started looking for her and, and stuff and she was doing all kind of shows. It's fucking, I think she did a snowboarding show or was it a skateboarding show? Some like X Games type fucking show she was hosting for a while. And um, <clears throat> she did Poker After Dark for a while. Uh, I know she does a lot of shit with the U.S. I don't know if she does now, but she, uh, she did a bunch of shit for like the troops and all that. She actually ended up marrying an Air Force dude. I don't know if she met him on one of her USO tours, but she's just a, she's just a, she's an awesome, awesome woman. And um, yeah, when I learned everything I learned about her, I was like, what ride dirt bikes? Like, what what girls? would say that they love to ride dirt bikes. There are girls that ride dirt bikes, but not that fucking many. And the ones that do don't look like that. <laughs> I've never seen a girl look that damn good who says that her favorite hobbies are riding dirt bikes and snowboards. Like, what the fuck? When I read that shit, I was like, oh, this is my dream girl right here. And you just, then you look at her and you just think, like, damn, like, easily we could have as many children as she wants because I would always be turned on. Just fucking, she's just that damn fine. Anyway, I'm not going to go on and on about it. What else do I want to say? Um, she supports the troops. She's oh yeah, she was on the that best damn show period. Oh yeah, and my favorite thing that really made me really really dig this chick, this woman. I'm sorry, is uh was the time on that best damn show. What is it called? The best damn show, best damn sports show period. I just saw her with like some fake teeth or fake lips in her mouth or something, and she was laughing so hard that she almost fucking fell like off her chair and i was like damn like she wasn't lying like she just like <laughs> she just likes to have fun dream girl right there leanne tweeden one of my all-time favorite champion beauties look her up if you don't know who she is you'll be hard pressed to find a better looking woman i'll tell you that you're an asshole oh the next segment um you're an asshole 
today's you're an asshole topic of discussion is um, if you get into someone else's car and you try to take over the fucking radio, fuck you. (laughs) I don't know what the deal is with that, but you know that if you don't do it yourself, then you know that everybody else who gets in your car fucking does it. Everybody does that shit. My mom does that shit. I can't change the station. I'm not going to say, fuck you, mom. But <laughs> I'm giving you a ride, ain't I? But it, it, if you think about it, it's rude as hell to get into somebody else's vehicle and then who's give, obviously giving you a ride and then demand that the fucking atmosphere be to your fucking liking. Like, I don't know. That just dawned on me the other day. I was like, well, what the fuck gives people the nerve to do that. Uh, uh, listen, listen, if if I'm going to allow you to ride me to where I need to go, I'm going to need you to please me audioly, audioly, <laughs> audioly. If that ain't a word, I'm making it a word. I'm going to need you to fix the audioness in this situation so that it is to my agreement. Fuck you. Get out walk bitch <laughs> that shit happens all the time i can sit here and think off the top of my head the last like fucking eight times i had people in my shit fuck the last my, my last the last time i had my buddy in my truck i went to the store came back out this dude had like reprogrammed my radio i'm like how the fuck did you what what the whole like touch screen shit with the satellite radio and all that was completely different it was doing some shit that i didn't even fucking know it did which is fine but I'm, and then, but then we're just driving. I don't even know how to put it back the way it was. And so we're, I guess we're just listening to fucking Jim's, uh, playlist now. It's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. Next segment. D- don't, don't do that. Get in somebody else's car. You're listening to what the fuck they're listening to. If you don't like it, fucking hitchhike. Fucking, you can run or fucking skip to where you want to get, bitch. <laughs> Next segment. Fix it now! Would you please fix that shit now, please? Just fix that shit. Fix that shit. I don't drink a lot of pop, but sometimes I drink pop or soda or Coke if you're from Texas. Did you know that in Texas, any kind of fucking soda pop, they just refer to as Coke? Which ain't a big deal, but I just think that's interesting. I lived there uh, when I was in basic training in tech school for the Air Force. And you would go to the fucking drive through and they would say, uh, you'd say, hey, can I get a number three with pickles, onions, ketchup, uh, no mustard? And they say, all right, you want a Coke with that? And I said, oh, yeah, I have a Coke. And I said, what kind? I'm like, oh, regular? They were like, no, I mean, you want Coke or Fanta or sweet? Tea? Like, what? What? Oh, you said Coke. <laughs> I don't know. That was the thing uh, that I found interesting. Fix it now. When you drink a can of pop, you have to open it first. And those little fucking tabs about rip my fucking fingernail off every time I go to open one. They either fucking either almost rip my fingernail off or like I'm digging into the fucking tip of my fingertip. Pop can flip tabs suck they're always flush up against the fucking can it requires a lot of fucking horse shit to to get it that fucking you ever i think they did that on a movie where they showed like a slow motion thing i think it was the ring wasn't it where somebody went to open a pop can and they went and pop lifted that fucking tab up up and it ripped their finger off in like slow motion and it's just the most painful looking shit you ever seen in your fucking life that's what I'm afraid is going to happen every time I open a fucking pop can and I hate it. And I know they sell little things that you can buy for like a keychain where you just slide it on there and open it. Who the fuck wants to, what kind of dedication is that to walk around with a, a, a dedicated pop opener thing? I mean, I guess people do it for beer. I don't do it for fucking beer bottles either. I'll use a, I can use two beer bottles to open a beer bottle or, or the edge of the table or a, I can use anything to open a beer bottle, so I don't carry an extra implement to open beer bottles with. I'm damn sure not going to carry something to open cans of pop with when I rarely even open them. 
But when I do open them, I'd rather not lose a fucking fingernail trying to do it. So I'm sure we have the technology available now to make a better fucking pop can opening system. Just make it so it's even if it was just lifted a slightly little bit up off the fucking can that so you can get some flesh from your fingertip underneath there. Problem solved. Moving on. The last thing I want to talk about today, I was actually going to get into a, a bigger subject, which is uh, porn. I'm going to save porn for the next episode, which I'm going to record this weekend. And it'll probably be probably be up Saturday or something. Just because uh, I'm already almost ready to do it. I got enough enough things to talk about. Um, but porn was a big one. Uh, but I'm so tired right now, I can hardly think. So the today's final segment is going to be something that I bought recently. And what it is, is the earbuds that I use all the time. And I mean, I use them all the time. They are the M-E-E Me Audio M6 Pro earbuds. I found these a, a couple years ago on Amazon. They're $50 or something like that, like 49 or something, somewhere around there, the $50 mark. And they're, they're pretty fucking awesome. First thing, the, the, the sound quality on these things is pretty damn good. There's even for, for little earbuds, there's a good amount of bass reproduction, which I, I do appreciate. Um, it's just, they sound quality. They come with a whole bunch of fucking shit. They come with a nice little fucking case that they come in and you get like, 90 million different fucking tips for the things that go in for every size to go in your fucking ear, including some of those ones. I forget what they're called, but they're the memory foam ones that are, uh, they, they, they form to the inside of your ear shape and stay that way. And then they, they're like noise canceling a little bit. I, I use them when I ride my motorcycle. I use them when I work out. I use them when I drive a lot of the time. I use them all the fucking time. They, they, I'm so used to having them in my ears that because they are just comfortable. They sound great. Um, the way that they're, I can't use normal earbuds, like the ones that come with like iPhones and shit, because I guess my ear is shaped differently and those things just fall right out of my ears. And I don't like the kind that drape around the back of your neck and all that horse shit like that. These are just regular, they're regular wires, but they have like a stiff piece that like a piece of wire. It shows you in the book, you hold them a certain way and bend it to fit, fit around the back of your ear. And then it stays like that. And then you put them in and they don't fall out ever. Um, you can run with them. You can do whatever you want. They come with an extra, they come with two sets of wires. One, the one set of wire is like, I think it explains in the instructions that they're a higher quality sound, but those ones, cause these are for like musicians and shit or what they're designed for And for like for this price for 50 bucks. You, I mean, it's, it's a great, you're talking about professional grade earbuds. And the, the one set of wires is the highest sound quality. And the other one has all the toggle button and the volume up and down slider and all that shit. But they both have like a quick disconnect. So if you were to like yank them on something, it they'll just pull away from the actual earbud themselves. And, and that way you're not like damaging. You're not just going to get like a short them or rip them or anything. And that's also how you swip, you swap them out. They come in different colors. I think, uh, I think they had like a flesh color like a flesh tone color and then like a white and then a black. I think I've had the white and the black. This is my second pair. I like them enough that I bought a, a, another pair. The first one I actually dropped and I think I stepped on the earbud part itself and destroyed it. But I think these even come with a good warranty. I didn't, uh, I didn't get into all that. I just bought another pair because I, I, I like these. I want to support the company. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for some earbuds, check them out. M E E audio M six pro earbuds. And I think they have other ones like a higher, a higher model and a lower model for more or less money, you know, to do different things. Was there anything else I want to say about that? No, that is all I'm going to do for today. Folks. We're already at an hour and should I get into porn? I got a whole lot to say about fucking porn. I'm going to save porn for probably Saturday's episode. So look for an episode this coming Saturday. Or maybe Sunday. Uh, definitely, we'll just call it a bonus episode, episode number nine. The first thing I'm going to talk about is porn. Um, thank you, as always, for joining me. Uh, another quick book plug, just in case you didn't catch it every other time I said it. It's called These Ones Are Mine. Please support your boy. Buy a copy on Amazon or Kindle. Um, it's a lot of content. It's it, it's 434 pages, I think, of 
true stories that are all these are ones that oh you know what i want to do ne- yeah i got something else i want to do next time uh that has something to do with the book i'm going to read the the cover from the last you know what i can do that right now uh because we're only at a minute and 15 i'm gonna read the the back cover from the book the original back cover because uh it'll give you an idea of what this book's about hold on okay it reads like this being engulfed in flames at a gas station being stabbed and then almost poisoned to death while in church having inappropriate sexual advances come at me from a female blood relative relative uh checking myself into a loony bin having false domestic abuse charges against me losing thousands of dollars to a slum lord in a lawsuit because of a bum lawyer and our joke of a small claims court system beating chronic depression on my own personally knowing two people that were electrocuted to death having what's this say? oh having crazy hallucin hallucinogenic acid trips being at a funeral where the casket ripped <laughs> where the casket ripped open as it was being lowered to the, into the ground being sprayed from head to toe with liquid human feces possibly being raped by a girl but not knowing for sure uh almost killing my brother with a television uh, uh, with a television set and the time i broke my wiener uh it says this book is a collection of true stories from my life that people seem to find ent- entertaining the list above are the stories that had to be left out because the book was just too long if this first book is received well then everything in that list along with a bunch more stand a good chance of being in the second installment either way if reading extraordinary true life stories is your cup of tea and 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 anything in that list is intriguing to you then flip this thing over and dig in because you're in for a whole lot more just like it the author and then it says uh some people's lives are boring mine has been anything but all right so here's the deal with that that was the original back cover blurb as they call it for the book i didn't go with that one i went with a way simpler one just for a couple reasons first of all I didn't want to list a whole bunch of shit that isn't in the book. <laughs> so I, I start off every fucking episode of this podcast talking about telling true stories that I think are pretty interesting. That's why I wrote the book. I My life has been a whole shitload of fucking interesting true stories. Uh, the book was way too fucking long, like I said. So these are the ones that I didn't even get to. Like It was 700 pages before I cut it down, and I hadn't even touched any of those subjects that I just talked about. So yeah, I can still tell all these stories. They're all still in my fucking head. Like being stabbed in, I was stabbed in fucking church. I have, I have been engulfed in flames at a gas station. True story. I did beat chronic depression by myself. Anyway, so I got a lot of sub, this isn't why I started talking about this. I don't want, I remember why I started talking about that, but I will also say something that happened to me, happened to me yesterday and this will be it. I'm gonna close on this. I went to work. Uh, I loaded, I load my own truck. Usually or I help my boss load my truck and then I take off from the warehouse and go make my deliveries. I loaded my truck. I closed it up and then I went to, uh, use the bathroom, which is at the other end of the fucking warehouse. And it's always me and my boss are the last two to leave. And so it was him. He was putting away his forklift after we got done doing everything. And I went down, ran to the bathroom. When I walked into the fucking bathroom on the right hand side, there's a, it goes urinal, urinal. And then stall, stall. And on the left-hand side, it's sink, sink. Or maybe three sinks. Maybe sink, sink, sink. I walked in, hooked the right, went to the first urinal. As I walk up to that urinal, the sink behind me, sink number one, they have those automatic sensors. And it goes, and starts fucking running. Like the water comes on. And then it goes off. And then, And just keeps doing it over and over and over again while I'm pissing. I'm just like, oh, okay, that's pretty interesting. So I get done pissing, put it away, or shake it off, put it away, turn around. The urinal immediately, like usually, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what happened. Uh, yeah, I shook it off, put it, put my dick away, turned around. The urinal didn't flush. The sink was still fucking flushing or uh, coming on, going off over and over again. Then the far fucking toilet flushes or whatever toilet, whatever the fucking toilet noise is who can make a toilet noise with their mouth that'd be interesting to hear joe list does a lot of weird noises the comedian from uh tuesdays with stories podcast one of my favorites check them out uh anyway so the sink's going crazy flushing or going on and off 
a, the, the far stall on the right toilet stall goes crazy flushing. Then the next, no, then I walk over to the sink and it stops. And then I think the sink next to it starts going. <laughs> then both fucking urinals behind me go start flushing. <laughs> The whole fucking bathroom just went fucking crazy. And I was just standing there. I got kind of a chill. It felt for a second. I honestly thought maybe the cleaning lady had died on her way. Because the cleaning lady is always there while we're there. And I thought, fuck, did she like die on her way home? Like crash her truck? And like her spirits like all in the air. (laughs) It was just fucking with me in the bathroom. Like, ha ha ha. I told you to wipe that sink out when you're done, motherfucker. You know, and then I went and looked outside. I didn't see her truck, so we'll see if she's there tonight. I hope she didn't die. I don't want I me. Mean, I don't knock on wood. I didn't mean to put that out there, but it was weird as fuck. Like it wasn't like these things were malfunctioning. It was like they were fucking with me. So the question for the day is: Do you believe in ghosts? And I'm gonna leave you with that. Thanks again for coming and being with me for uh, episode eight. Please come back for episode nine. Please tell a friend to get me some subscribers uh, so we can grow. Please go on iTunes. Give me a five star rating so we can grow. Uh, My promise to you is to try to get better every time you see I'm trying. I'm trying to make more fucking interesting sound effects and and, and pump this shit up. Um, This is something I like I said before, I'm going to do this for a long time. I love it. It's it's one of the few things. It's rare to find things that, that you do in life that you actually fucking love to do. And whenever you do find those things, you should do them and, and, and just fucking continue to do them. And as long as there's somebody out there who wants to listen, I will continue to fucking do this shit. As always, uh, you can get a hold of me. I hate tipping at AOL.com. Comments, questions, suggestions. I already said all this shit. The motto. Do you remember it? Uh, be good, take care of yourself and always try to help other people when you can peace